When I become president of these United States, it's gonna be great. I solemnly swear that the voice of every man, woman, and baboon will be heard. Hello, participating members of society. Julian and my running mate, Trace, here for D News. Two and a half thousand years ago, some ancient Greek people got together in Athens and decided that not having a say in their government was a bunch of minotaur skata. They decided there should be a system where everyone, well, men at least, could have an equal say in decision making, and they named their new system Democratia, which translates to power of the people. Mm, right on. This has for the most part been regarded as a step in the right direction. Getting together, coming to a decision with equal voices regardless of our position in society, it's what separates us from monkeys. I'm totally kidding. Monkeys do it too, as observed by researchers from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. The researchers tracked the movements of a troop of olive baboons in Kenya and found that every member of the troop had an equal say in where they all went. Now, this was surprising because all of baboons have a strong social hierarchy and dominant members get choice picks of food or mates over their subordinates. But when it comes to trekking across the savanna, all of baboons move more like a school of fish or a flock of birds. In other words, no dominant members of the troop had a disproportionate say on where the entire gang went. When two monkeys started moving in different directions, the rest of the troop would decide which to follow and eventually the whole group would go with the decision of the majority. And if the two initiators picked directions that were similar, the group would choose a path that split that difference. They compromised. Americans are more stubborn than baboons. Oh, that is going to hurt us in the polls. Now, you may be thinking that, sure, group-based decision-making may not be uniquely human, but it sounds like a primate thing at most. Well, it's not. Democracy has been observed in... bees. Now, I know, bees have a queen, so you might think that technically makes them a monarchy, but the queen only has that title because she gave birth to everyone in the colony. It's exactly how British people work. I would like to state on behalf of DNews that that is not a thing. Anyway, and like England's constitutional monarchy, the people, I guess in this case the bee poll, have a say in some issues. If the hive is deciding it's time to choose a new location, bees, who are in the know, weigh in on benefits of potential sites. Size, flower density, humidity, amount of honey they'd have to put in the NHS. National Honey Service. Then the individual bees vote using the power of dance. Once they have enough bees in on the dance craze, they Brexit their old hive and head to the site the majority picked with the queen in tow. Of course, some bees will stay behind at the old site where new queens are hatched. Usually the first queen to mature breaks out and murders the other infant queens to establish herself at the top. That is how the British work. That is more accurate, yes. However, if the original colony was very large, then the bees will actually send out two new groups to set up colonies, and the second group needs a strong queen of their own. Now, in order to find out which potential queen is the most Beyonce, nice. The workers will actually protect all the developing queens until they hatch, and then let them fight to the death. You can think of it as an election. Of course, not all animals or insects that live in groups have democratic systems. Wolf packs or ant colonies don't work like baboons or bees because their strategy seems to be working for them so far. So will democracy turn out to be the system that leads to long-term success for you in particular and our species as a whole? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to participate in it. Sometimes in a democracy, people use their voice to elect someone who would rather that they shut up. To learn why this odd hybrid called an authoritarian democracy happens, check out Trace's video here. But why would anyone elect an authoritarian government? Aren't we masses yearning to be free? In the 40s, political scientists began analyzing authoritarian regimes to better understand their rise. Researcher Eric Fromm hypothesized people's authoritarian voting stems from feelings of insecurity. And if you're a political junkie, we've got lots of good coverage of the DNC and RNC at Seeker Daily. Go ahead and check it out. As a populist candidate, Trump tends to say what he believes people want to hear, which sometimes runs contrary to the Republican platform. Trump has not only held liberal ideas, he was once actually a registered Democrat from 2001 to 2009. Do you think more than half of the people are right more than half of the time? Or would you vote to scrap democracy and try something else? Well, let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time on D News.